Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys The Mandalorian 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than the Tusken Raider. Now I personally never thought Hot Toys were going to touch a character as obscure as this guy is. But if you think about it, we saw the Tusken Raiders in the prequel trilogy, in the original trilogy, and now in the Mandalorian, so it makes total sense that this guy is finally being made. Because no matter which era of Star Wars you're collecting, you know who this is, and technically he can go in any of your Star Wars displays. Now I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is of course down in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art. Now right up here on the front we've got a massive shot of the figure himself and then down the bottom we've got the wraparound style banner that they've been using for the Mandalorian line. Another shot of the figure and one more on the side here. On the back you do have all of the relevant legal information. Now I personally did pick up two of these for one very specific reason that we'll get into in just a second. You do have an absolutely gorgeous full-size image of the Tusken Raider on the inside and then here we have the figure himself. Now I personally wasn't super hype when they first announced him. I was thinking surely there are other characters that we need more so than Tusken Raiders but if you think about it, what I said in the intro is absolutely true. No matter which era of Star Wars you're collecting, technically this guy can fit in to your display. First in-hand impressions are pretty positive. I'm loving the look and feel here. We do have, of course, one tray though, so what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces that go with the Tusken Raider. Now starting off with the display base first, well would you look at that, hello old friend, it's the same tried and true footprint sand diorama display base that we've pretty much gotten with every figure in the Mandalorian line. I mean yes, for the sand people this does actually work, for once. But still, I wouldn't have minded seeing Hot Toys change it up and give us something slightly different. I do like the paint finish here. It's got that sandy undertone with some dirtiness over the top and also some white speckling on the sides. It's kind of giving me beach vibes. Which is not really what you think about when you think Tatooine, but trust me, when you see this in person, it meshes very well with the Sand People. You do have a nice metal nameplate that says Tusken Raider on the front, and also a regular crotch grabber up on top. Now, one of the coolest things about this figure is he comes with an additional bandolier, so you can either give him a third one to create a very unique look, or you can swap it out to have multiple different display options. It's super simple to install, there's literally a velcro strap on one side, it's a pleathery style piece, and it does have some dirt and grime on the surface. We will touch on that more a little bit later in the video. Now he does come with this piece. If you don't remember what this is and you're sitting there scratching your head, this is kind of the peace offering, if you will, that was given to the young lad that was accompanying Mando. Initially he didn't want to drink it because of the smell and probably the look as well, but you do have that black liquid on the inside which is nice and high gloss and some really awesome texture on the outside. This thing is awesome. Now you also get the macro binoculars that were traded to the sand people. You do have some really nice high gloss for the lenses and a bunch of different paint finishes. Some nice red there on those little computer looking keys on the front there and you also have some various greeblies. It's very nicely painted and detailed with this shiny silver scuffing on the surface. This thing looks fantastic. Now you do get three different weapons that you can use with your Tusken Raiders. 
Again, in conjunction with the bandolier, you can mix up the look so they look slightly different on display. The first of which is the Cycler Rifle. This thing is awesome. It's a massive rifle. There are also a bunch of different paint finishes here, plus this little spring looking thing towards the back and a pleathery style strap. I love the gold metallic finish with the wash over the top. It makes it look aged and weathered and dirty and grimy, which is perfect for Tatooine. Lastly, you get two different gaffy sticks, one with an I'm going to spike you end and one with an I'm going to bash you end. They are both very, very deadly looking. One is a little bit sharp though, so do be careful not to prick yourself. And they are two different colors for the handle sections. Plus, this one has an additional spike towards the bottom with some really awesome texture. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of the way these weapons look and that you get two different versions. You also get a full array of hands, but the cool thing is they've done something slightly different here. They all come with individual fabric wraps. This is actual fabric, it's not pre-sculpted. I didn't think Hot Toys were going to do this, but that means this should mesh perfectly with the wraps on his arms to create a very seamless look. We will touch on that more when we look at the figure himself. Speaking of which, what we are going to do now is get the Tusken Raider himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I cannot tell you how scary the Tusken Raider design was when I was a kid and watching Star Wars for the first time. When I saw this guy pop up on screen, yeah, I was pretty darn frightened, because just look at his face, it's all kinds of creepy. This is a perfect alien character design. You don't know if the bandages and the weird mask thing is his actual face or if his face is underneath. It leaves you asking questions, you're perplexed, but at the same time it's a really cool design. So I'm surprised that it took Hot Toys this long to actually give us this figure. It's a relatively simple thing to make, it's mostly just fabric robes. And I'm pleased to report that, yeah, Hot Toys have done a great job job translating the Tuscan Raider design into one six scale. I for one am a very happy Star Wars collector. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now initially I wasn't entirely sure that I was going to love the fit and finish in hand. I mean, based on the final blogger photos, I thought that this guy looked very clean. I thought there wasn't enough weathering here, there wasn't enough going on, and it didn't look all that accurate. But, unfortunately, sometimes this is the case. I have to eat my words. This guy looks fantastic. Now we will touch on the weathering in just a second. Starting off with the head sculpt first, yeah, that's a Tuscan Raider. They nailed it. The wraps look gorgeous. They're all fully sculpted, there's no material being used here, but it actually does a decent enough job of looking like fabric. The horns up the top are made of plastic, and so too are the various bits and pieces that make up his very gnarly looking face. Now on the inside you do have a little bit of gloss, just to make it look like that pleathery style material that makes up their little mouthpiece. It's a very scary looking head sculpt, but it's pretty much bang on to the Tusken Raiders. Now moving down to the upper torso, there is a lot going on here as well. You have some rags that are wrapped around his neck, and this little piece down below. It is firmly connected, all of this stuff moves in conjunction with the neck, as you can see, but you can also move the head sculpt independently. It doesn't get in the way, and nothing really gets snagged. Now as for the bandoliers, like you saw earlier, there is a separate one with these pockets, so you can switch up the look. I will do a snap transition in just a second so we can see what that looks like, but here is the basic form, what he looks like out of the box. One with the pouches, then one with 
I guess what would be a bullet style pouch. It's a massive one and you do have the various ribbed sections. They're all non-functional, you can't open up any of the pockets, but they are suitably weathered. That's something specifically that I was really worried about. There is a little bit of dirt and grime on the surface of both this pocket one and also the one underneath, and the same thing can be said for the belt. There's some black speckling just to make it look like they are slightly aged. Now as for the outer robes, these were the ones I was really worried about. But I'm pleased to report there is tattering around the edges, so it does look suitably dirty and filthy and nasty. And then on the inner robes, we have a ton of speckling and dirt. This looks like the sand people should. They've been running around the deserts of Tatooine. They've been getting rather filthy, so this just makes perfect sense, and they don't look anywhere near as clean as I was thinking they were going to, which is definitely a good thing. Now, some people did tell me, no, Justin, they are supposed to be that clean. Go ahead and check out the Mandalorian. Don't worry, I've seen it, and yeah, they were still fairly dirty. Now, coming down to the arms, they've done a very interesting thing here. Now, we've already spoken about the wraps on the hands, but because they are fabric and the wraps on the arms are also fabric, it pretty much meshes perfectly. There is a very subtle color shift between the rags on the hands and also on the arms, but to be honest, at a distance, it all looks very seamless. Then, coming down to the boots, this is one area where Hot Toys kind of let me down. They're fully sculpted and there's no split cut boot design. We will touch on that more a little bit later, but at the very least I do like the detail on the underside and I also like the edges. It kind of makes it look like they have been worn and they've sort of frayed around the edge there. Underneath the robes he does have a full pair of pants and I'm pleased to report it's all fabric. That means you shouldn't really have any issues when it comes to posing. But if you are like me and you do want to see what the second look looks like, well, here we have it. It's relatively simple, it's pretty much the exact same thing, except we've swapped out one of the bandoliers and ditched the belt. I've also popped on the rifle with the sling, just so it mixes up the look even more so. I don't know which of the two I prefer, but you all know I love when we get different display options in the box. It encourages people who are kind of crazy collectors like me to pick up more than one. Now for our quick side-by-side -side comparison, because the Tuscan is so versatile, I didn't really know who to start off with, but I thought, why not take a look at another weird and wonderful Tatooine creature? So here's the Jawa. He is significantly shorter, which makes perfect sense. In the film, he was a little dude, so this is about the right size. Tuscan is a big, imposing presence, and his outfit is quite dirty. That's something, as I discussed in the previous clip, that I was worried about, but trust me, they do work very nicely in the same display. Would I have minded seeing some more wrinkling and creasing in his robes? No, that would have been a nice touch, just like we're seeing with Jawa here. But still, at the end of the day, these two look really good side by side. Next up, here we have the Jura Steel Mando next to Tusken Raider, and this works perfectly as well. I mean, I personally did buy the Tuscans for the most part to go in my original trilogy display, but if you wanted to, yeah, he's supposed to go in the Mando line anyway, so he should look right at home alongside your various versions of Mando. Plus, in both seasons, Mando does spend time on Tatooine, so this guy does fit in perfectly with either shelf. And lastly, for an original trilogy comparison, here we have the Sideshow C-3PO. I know, what a wacky comparison, but I thought, why not? We see C-3PO on Tatooine, they're interacting with the Sand People, this makes perfect sense at least to me, and yeah, they look great together. This is straight up classic original trilogy, so hopefully this gives you a rough idea idea of how versatile the Tusken Raider truly is. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now, due to the obscure size and shape of the head sculpt, 
it didn't really know what to expect, but I'm pleased to report there's a ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the neck, so going forward and back is pretty much no issue, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to about there, they will of course go forward and back on soft ratchets, you have a butterfly joint at the shoulder, a swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow which is nicely ratcheted and of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. As for the torso it does crunch forward and back but there is some padding underneath that you do need to contend with. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs themselves are on super heavy duty ratchets going forward to about there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh a double bend on softer ratchets at the knee, and of course, lastly, a ball joint down here for the ankle. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is the lack of split cut boot design. With the way these boots are sculpted with the various wraps and creases, it would have been a perfect opportunity to sneak in a hidden cut there. But unfortunately they didn't. Granted, you still do get a teeny amount of pivot side to side, but if they had put a cut in there, number one, I highly doubt you would have noticed it unless you went looking for it just due to all the sculpting, but also it would have given you even more range. The second annoying thing is the reuse once again of this sand diorama display base. Yes, for the Tuscan Raider it does make more sense, but you're still stuck with having his feet in these two predetermined positions. It's just a little bit limiting for me personally. I would have preferred if they'd literally just given us the same display base as Heavy Mando, with those printed cards on top that still has the sand effect, but isn't anywhere near as limiting as this predetermined foot position base topper. The third annoying thing, and by the way this doesn't bother me whatsoever, but it may bother some of you. There is a lot of pleather here, which I know we've already discussed, but all of these pouches and these straps for the bandoliers could have very easily been sculpted plastic. They didn't really need to be actual pleather. That means that sometime down the line these pockets may start to peel open and we also may start to see some deterioration. Some people like me won't be bothered by that, but I know that some people definitely will. The first cool thing is that you do get that swappable bandolier so you can have two different looks on display. I know it's a pretty small difference between the two, but it's enough for people, I think, to warrant picking up more than one. Plus, it doesn't really stop there. You can swap and interchange, maybe you want to only have one having one bandolier. You really have unlimited customizing potential. The second cool thing is that this piece down below actually has some real metal in it. These two rods on the side that hold the entire thing together are made of actual metal, so it's really nice and sturdy. Now, unfortunately, some people who have already reviewed this figure mistakenly said the little horns up the top are made of metal as well. They aren't. They're made of plastic. So I do urge those, specifically those who work for certain companies actually selling these figures, to get their facts right because I don't think it's all that nice to mislead customers and tell them these pieces are made of metal. The third cool thing is the very subtle wiring in the robes. Now to be honest with you, I did think initially that the robes were too clean, but under closer inspection in some proper lighting, yeah you can see there is a ton of dirt and grime and weathering rubbed in to the robes themselves, so I'm happy with the way they look. Then the second point of contention was how are they going to fit and how are they going to flow over the body? Fairly well, it turns out. There are some wires running down the outside here so you can mess around with the pleats and the folds to get it to pretty nicely wrap around the body. Just wrapping up on the Hot Toys Tuscan Raider. Now going into this I was pretty excited, I mean how could I not be? I'm a Star Wars fan, this is a classic Star Wars creature design, now translated, pretty darn faithfully mind you, into 1-6 scale. So yeah, you can already probably tell I'm very happy with this product. Is he 100% perfect? No, I don't think he is. 
I wouldn't have minded if the robes were even dirtier and there were more wrinkles and creases, and also if they'd added a split-cut boot design, but everything else I'm very happy with. I love the fact that they've done the seamless look of the robes on the hands and also on the forearms. When you push them together and hide the wrist peg, it's a pretty magical thing because it looks very seamless. The wires in the robes are integrated pretty perfectly and they give you enough posability to have some fun. And I also like the weathering. It's not over the top. Yes, I would have liked more but it's still very serviceable. Then we get to the two different display options, or technically there's even more, because you can mix and match and create your own perfect sand person, and that's a really good thing. That means if you are picking up more than one, like me, you can have multiple different looks in the display. Plus, the weapons are fantastic. They're really nicely sculpted, very nicely painted, and they fit in perfectly with the overall look and feel of the Star Wars universe. They're very aged, they're very weathered, they're dirty and grimy. So yeah, they do work. Overall, as I said, I'm very happy with the Tusken Raider. Now, if you are looking to pick up your own, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is, of course, down in the description below. They have 12-month installment plans and an awesome reward system. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and, of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.